Alrighty, my friends, welcome back to Salt City Counseling. Once again, my name's Scott. I'm a licensed therapist here in the beautiful state of Utah. In this video, I'm going to talk about anxiety and fear and understanding anxiety and uh, realizing that uh, how to get ahead of anxiety partially lies within understanding anxiety, how it works, what it's made of. Um, get to know your own mind, get to know your own mental illness, get to know your own mental health issues. As a society and a culture, we are plagued with plagued with anxiety, plagued with it. Um, to me, it is probably more prevalent than most other things. Um, it's just on an individual and collective level. Um, we are just absolutely riddled with anxiety. And, um, and young people too, right? I work with teenagers. I work with young people. Their anxiety is so bad these days. I mean, it is really, really, really bad. Um, we've really done a number on them in terms of anxiety. I think social media is terrible for us. It's just done a number on our anxiety. So this is really important. If you want to understand anxiety and if you want to improve your anxiety, you have to understand the difference between fear and anxiety. Now, fear uh, fear is, is the threat or feeling the threat or feeling fear, feeling afraid of a real threat, something that is really actually threatening. Okay. And, uh, anxiety on the other hand is the fear or worry or the feeling anxiety, anxious feeling around threats. They're not real. They are imagined. They are fake or they're extremely exaggerated. Um, and most of the time, like th if you think about your anxieties, right? Most of the time, um, anxiety has a way in our minds of taking something that is maybe even minuscule. It's not even a real threat. It's not even a real problem. And it will make it look as though it is this enormous, enormous threat, right? And the emotion is so strong that it like absolutely hijacks our brain, hijacks our bodies, hijacks our behaviors, and then we just become um, sort of a slave to it. Like it jerks us around. It makes it hard to live, does it not? And so the important thing to understand about, about anxiety is that it is a fake threat, is an imagined threat, or is a greatly exaggerated threat. I'll give you an example of like a greatly exaggerated threat. I hear this from young people and teenagers all the time. They're afraid of what other people might be thinking about them. Now, it's true. Other people could be thinking about you and they could be thinking, wow, that person is stupid or ugly and I hate them. Now, first of all, um, may, that could be true. But for the most part, you know what everybody else is thinking about? Themselves. Most people just primarily right, or worry, or engage in the same ang anxious thinking, um, and dealing with their same mental health issues as you are. They're probably just as afraid of you as you are of them, frankly. But this, again, this is an imagined or exaggerated threat. So maybe those people are thinking negative things. Why is that harmful to you, right? And so anxiety can convince us that something like that is a big threat and causing a big harm to us. It's an illusion. It's a fake illusion. It's, a, it's, it's an exaggerated illusion, right? And so getting ahead of anxiety is really a matter of recognizing this factor, uh, recognizing this actual dynamic, right? Is uh, recognizing and realizing that these aren't actual threats. And as much as they may feel like actual threats, um, they're not. And I've even heard, I even hear people kind of say things such as, um, oh, I just worry that someone's going to break into the house. Now, is that a real threat? Not until somebody's actually breaking into the house, right? Uh, is that a possibility? Yeah, probably, possibly, depending on where you live, right? Um, or, and, and maybe some other factors. But until somebody's breaking into your house, actually trying to break in, it's not a real threat. Now, is it? But anxiety has a way of uh, convincing us that it is a real threat. So, overall, if you feel like you're an anxious person and you are, um, you, you want to take an inventory of your anxieties. And, like, for example, here's some anxiety homework for you. I love this. Uh, to me, this is one of the most simple and effective uh, homework assignments that you can do. So here's your anxiety homework. Easy peasy. As usual, I like to wave around my notebook. That's not it's not handy. 
I don't know where it went. Here it is. It's on the floor. <laughs> Should be on the shelf. Write this stuff down. If you want to improve your mental health, write it down. Get a notebook. Get a journal. It's way more effective if you write it down. Way more effective. Make a list of your anxieties. Okay? Make a list of your anxieties. Now, on a scale of 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 or whatever scale works for you, uh, put a number of how big of an actual threat that worry or that anxiety is. Right? Okay, and if you rate it high, then feel free to make a list of the evidence that supports it, because anxiety is is without evidence. If there is evidence and it's an actual threat, it's not anxiety; it's fear, and you should act on it. Right? You should do something about it. Right? If somebody's actually breaking into your house, you should go pick up your baseball bat and call the cops or whatever. Right? Uh, get your let your Rottweiler <laughs> out of the bedroom, whatever. <laughs> Um, uh, but, uh, uh, anyways, on my, um, I'm just imagining a Rottweiler, just like people coming in through the front door in this pissed off Rottweiler. <gasps> yeah. Anyways, um, make your list of anxieties. Is this a real threat or no? Be honest with yourself. Okay. And then you, you have to begin to convince yourself that, man, I, why do I listen to anxiety? Why do I listen to this? Because what you have to understand about when it comes to mental health and thoughts and anxiety is there's basically two sides of you. Well, at least. Sometimes there's more. But the two main parts of you is there's you and then there's your thoughts. And we often confuse them as being the same thing. They are not. It's really important to make that separation. How do you make that separation? Mindfulness. I talked about insight, awareness, and conscientiousness in another video. Go check it out. Uh, that'll help you out in this, okay? These practices will separate you from your thoughts. So there's you, and then there's your thoughts, okay? And you are not your thoughts. Your thoughts require your participation. If you do not participate in those thoughts, they go away, they die. And so truly, it's a matter of learning to discipline your mind and to stop participating in, in these thoughts. I, I talk about mental discipline to people. They look at me like, what are you talking about? And we do. We lack di mental discipline, mostly thanks to these damn things, right? We, we lack mental discipline. And a lot of people, they don't believe me when I say mental discipline is really, really important. You must learn it and you must actively practice it because it's good for you. And they go, why? Well, because you can, se so that you can separate you from your thoughts, when you can do that, you can recognize that, hey, these anxious thoughts, they require my participation and I choose not to participate. And then they go away. And I know that sounds simple. It takes work. It takes practice. You have to make a habit out of it. And you have to, you just have to practice it. That's honestly one of the keys to mental health. So I'm going to wrap this up because I, I got an appointment. I got a client coming here in a few minutes. But <clears throat> I'm going to wrap this up. What you have to understand about anxiety is that it requires your participation and it's fake. It's not real. It is a, it's a really bogus, um, like it's a, it's a play, right? It is an illusion. It's theater. It's not real. And the sooner uh, and more effectively that you can convince yourself that it's not real, the better off you're going to be. Okay. More to come on this stuff, more to come. So make sure that you stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all that stuff. You know what to do. Helps me out a lot. Help me get to that thousand subscribers, y'all. Okay, hope you're doing well. Feel free to ask your questions in the comments below, etc., etc. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.